Welcome to the Ausgel Podcast, where we bring the gel ball community together. Each week, we have a special guest where we talk about what's new in the world of gel ball, be it mill sims, speed ball, and everything in between. Now, welcome to our host. Hi, I'm Dan from Ausgel. Hi, I'm Pete from Tech Edge. And today, I'm joined by one of the most influential people in our industry. Pete, thanks a bunch for joining us and making the journey up here today, mate. Really appreciate it. Now, for those out there who don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about who Peter Clark is. I hate questions like this, Dan. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm the owner of Tack Edge. Yep. Pretty much. So it's that simple. I mean, most people in the industry, I suppose, know about Tack Edge. I'm hoping they do anyway. I work pretty hard on the um, marketing side of things. So I I hope they they know who we are. But yeah, mate... um, just that's my job is just to try and keep things rolling at Tack Edge. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, um, let's talk about the beginnings of Tactical Edge hobbies, like the the idea, the concept. Um, how did it come about? You want to know how I thought of it or how I got into it? Both. Both. Okay. So the way I thought of it, I was actually. Yeah. I don't know if you guys remember David Lionhelm. Do you remember that fella? I do. Yeah, he was um, a senator yeah, from senator memory. For yeah, Liberal Democrats. Yeah. Anyway, I just so happened to be reading one of his articles and in the article it was like a picture of a gel blast that said, yep. why is Airsoft illegal and this is legal? Yeah. And I said to myself, well, that's a very good question. So I actually started looking into it and I ended up coming across Brad yep. on his website, Arm at Heaven, and um, yep. I ended up buying one. It was, it was called the Salt King. Yep. It was the worst thing you've ever seen, but at the time I thought it was unreal. Yeah, and um, Joe, my business partner, he's, he's in the room. Hello, Joe. Hey, Joe. <laughs> um, I uh, he he came around to my house. I can't remember. Anyway, we were talking about, it and I was like, "Have a look at this thing. This is yeah. real. It shoots these jelly balls and all that sort of thing." And I started shooting him or something like that. Um, and then I, I, I tried to get more off Brad. Yep. And what I found was that he, he didn't have any stock. He never had any stock. Yeah. I'm assuming it was just the supply issue. I, was, I know Brad tries really hard, but. Um, I thought, well, this looks like a cool side hustle, so I'll get some in and we'll set up a little website and yeah, you know, sell them online and make that, and it just blossomed. Out. So it just blossomed from there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we got, I think I think me and Joe put about three grand in or something along yep. those lines. Um, we got a whole bunch of absolute crap in. Yeah, the worst stuff ever. And um, the, the funniest thing is we were getting these yep. little AKs in, and I thought they were full size. Yeah, they came in, they were about this big. Um, oh no really small yeah and i looked at him and i went because uh, we, we actually pre-ordered them yeah. we sold them all and we just went oh look just send them two because <laughs> so <we had> <laughs> people too and, uh, <laughs> it was hilarious we were just like oh my god did you get any hate like nothing no, no and it was one, because of the two probably I, I don't know yeah i don't know i think wow. people were like oh they've sent me two accidentally i don't know but yeah. we just said how can you get mad at a company though when they're yeah. sending you two yeah. of something you've ordered that's great well, yeah because and it was only like 40 bucks or something yeah. like that. in hindsight people would have been fine with it yeah i think but we didn't know yeah we had no idea what we were doing oh man i'm a financial planner I, I don't have a clue about retail nothing i had no yep. idea um so we ended up just going oh. and and joe's a rigger yeah. So we just, we were the blind leading the blind. Yeah. Um, I set up a Weebly website. Yeah. We were like trying to print out the orders. We had no idea what was going on. Yeah. Um, we got them all mixed up. We had to unpack them set and pack them again. It yeah. Was, it was an absolute, for lack of a better word, cluster. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we had his daughters around. Yeah. We were packing them up. We were chucking them in a trailer. And Jeez. The, the post office. It was, it was crazy. Um, but that, that sort of started the whole thing. So, so Joe, uh, the the other he's the other owner of Tack Edge. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Yeah, um, 50-50. So, how how do you guys know each other? Like, how did you guys come to know each other? Well, my I used to own like a hairdressing salon, which my wife yep. was. Yeah, you know, she she owned it. Sort of yeah, and Joe's wife. Yeah, had a job. She came to work for us, and then me and Joe met each other. Yeah, just from that. Oh, and cool. Yeah, we we went to a couple of Christmas parties that we held. And yeah. Me and Joe go along pretty well, and nice. You know, just went from there. We just smoke cool. a lot of cigarettes and smoke <laughs> together. I've quit now, but yeah, um, yeah, we used to smoke. smoke no, I think together. we've all been down that path. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Well, 
Look, uh, I, I guess getting into some of the more serious stuff. Okay. Okay. okay, so what a lot of people don't know is that there was a case involving a seized hack edge container. And um, and from, from what I'm led to believe, that is ultimately what led to the wider acceptance of gel blasters in Queensland. Sure. Can, can you talk us through a little bit about that, how it happened, what happened? It's a super long story. Yep. Um, it, what I was just talking about then was our first shipment. Yeah. We literally made a bit of money from that. Yeah. We threw it all at a new container. Yeah. And that particular container. Yeah. It's way in. Um, uh, I was using a, a, a customs broker mm-hmm. and he actually said to me, no, I'm not, I'm not touching this anymore. I said, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. geez, well, it's on its way. It's a bit late now. Yeah. Um, so we went to another lady. And so anyway, we went to this lady and she basically told customs, okay, we've got yep. imitation firearms on board. I had no idea. I thought they're toys. I'm, I'm right to yeah. bring these in. I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. I thought it was exactly like a cap gun down at, you know, yep. the toy world or whatever. Anyway, I lost my lolly because obviously I don't like uh, government getting involved in anything. I'm, I'm a bit like that. I don't really Overstepping like... Overstepping a little bit, yeah. Well, I, I'm sort of a bit of a personal freedom sort of yeah, advocate, good. I guess. Yeah. So, you know, I've got my political views and all that sort of thing. Yep. So I try to keep them to myself. But when people, when the government gets involved and takes something from me, that's when I get a little bit active. Oh, good. Um Anyway, I went in there and, uh, well, I didn't go in there. I started emailing and started emailing ministers and applying for B709As and getting rejected and yep. going through the whole thing. And then I, I ended up speaking to, I think his name was Al, Adam, Alan Gill? Oh, no, not Adam. Do you remember the original guy who was doing the B709As? I can't remember his name. Oh, it was Alan Ward. Ward, have a clue Ward. From back then, yeah. Was it Ward or something like that. Anyway, um, he was like, I got on the phone to him and he said, you know what, even if I did give, give you a B, was going to give you a B7099A, even if you were eligible for it, I'd just not give you one under public safety. Hmm. I said, oh, is that right? Okay, so you're making up the rules now as you go. He said, yep, wow. that's what I'm doing. I said, okay, well, we'll go from here. And anyway, I ended up getting, talking to the ACCC, getting certificates that proved that it met the Australian standards. You know, yep. what, you know what I'm saying? You, yeah. you, you would know the EN yep. certificates, all that sort of thing. And I got them. And I got the, the company in China to produce them for me. Yeah. And there was this consumer protection notice that had to be mentioned. I, I was really sort of talking to the ACCC guy who dealt with soft projectile toys. I didn't know there was such a thing, a yeah. guy that dealt with that sort of area. Anyway, I got to know him quite well and he sort of said, this is what's got to be on the certificate. You've got to have all of these... Uh, boxes tick yeah so anyway i went and did it got it all done submitted it to the police said they meet the toy standards you have no um leg to stand on to not give me a b7 no no anyway uh in the end he did um, yeah he gave it to me <laughs> yep and i took that to customs i said i've got a b7 no no you've seized my container obviously they seized it beforehand yeah sort of backtracking in the story a little bit they seized it they said they're imi- uh, they're imitation firearms you yep. can't have them Gave them the B7 and on A. I said, now I can have them. They said, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, come pick them up. Yep. Me and Joe hired a truck. We're like ready to go. And then they yeah. called me. We were meant to pick it up at 2. They called me at about 12 p.m. Yep. And said, oh, yeah, no, we're re-seizing them under airsoft firearms. We now class them as airsoft <sighs> firearms. I was like, oh, okay, gee, that's great. Um, anyway, uh, we, we ended up meeting a lawyer um, who was mates of a mate who Joe knew a guy who it yeah. just sort of all boiled down to it. And before that, I'd uh, received a sort of uh, an advice from a barrister in WA. Yep. And he was like, well, they can't seize them. They're not firearms because the projectile is not ammunition. Yep. And, and there's this rule called the adjustum generis rule, which means that you can't... So it's shot, bullet or other. Yep. Other can't just mean anything that the police want it to. It can't just be an all-encompassing, overarching other. You know sure. what I mean? It can't mean a stick or a, you know, a, a plant. Yeah, it has to be similar to the preceding words of shot or bullet. Yeah, has to be similar. Um, you know, it has to be hard, made of lead, something along those lines to to relate it back to, um, that shot or bullet. Yep. Anyway, um, I took it to this new lawyer in Queensland. His name's Peter Kusky. He's an absolute legend. And I said, you know, this is, uh, and I pretty much went, bang. Here's my case. Yeah. And, and he sort of sat there looking through it for a little bit and he just looked up with a smile and said, all right, 
Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he Love didn't it. say that. He sort of yeah. said, oh, you know, um, well, I think there's a case here with a big Excellent. smile on his face. <laughs> a said, very so, neutral response. Yeah. And yeah. I said, do you think yeah. it's a good case? He said, oh, look, you know, I think we should have a go. And yeah. I was like, okay, right. Yeah. And uh, look, he, he obviously knew yep. that the case was good. I had a B7 and I know I had the... Yeah, the the EN seventy one certificate or whatever it was called, I can't remember yeah. anymore. ISO eight one two four had all this stuff. Had correspondence. Had a freedom of information. I had everything yeah. there. It was like I'd paralegal the whole thing and handed it to him on a silver yeah. platter. And um, he just we just walked in there and uh, we had the barrister and he just argued the, the exact same point, shop or whatever other. Um, we actually conceded that it was operating on compressed gas. So we we actually made that we conceded to that. So that's mm. fine, you can have that, but it's not ammunition, so it yeah. can't be classed as a firearm. In hindsight, we probably should have gone after the compressed gas thing, but at the time yeah. we had no idea. So yeah. um, we just run with the um, shop or other and that worked. And that's history. Yeah, that's where and it all went, went from there. All went from there, yep. yeah. Because I do remember the days before that actually happened, everything was very grey. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. it was uh, a gamble um, every time you wanted to import something. Well, yeah. Yeah. It sort of still is a little bit. I mean, yeah. you've got to tick all the boxes and all that sort of thing, as you know. Yep. Um, but, yeah, in general, we're free to go. Yeah. So. Unless you're trying to bring in parts because then the ABF turns into the fun police. Well, I mean, I've got my opinions on that. And <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think they're correct. Yeah. Um, but it does take yep. going to court to prove it. So. Yeah. Oh, I can't do another court there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> South Australia killed me. Yeah. Lie. I'd imagine. I'd yeah. imagine. All right. So... Let's let's talk about South Australia. Sure. All right. You me- you mentioned that there. Yep. Um. Wh- what's your take on the whole situation down there, mate? Because you had you had a brick and mortar store down there, didn't you? Yeah. 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 Yep. So, uh, like a lot of the people, the guys down there, they know Simon and and Nathan and all that sort yep. of thing. They're they're quite sort of active in the community down there. Um. They're they're heartbroken. Those boys, and it, it was heartbreaking for me to give them a, give them that call that day and say, hey guys, you got to pack it up. You know, you yeah. Pack it up and. Yeah, and it was a good store. It did yeah. really well. Um, I think the M Fray one, one did a bit better to start with because yep. they sort of got in. They were the only ones, and they sort yeah. of ruled the market down there for a little while. Um, but yeah, when we went down there, the store did well, yeah. really well, and um, yeah, the guys down there were awesome. And and then it was this very happened. Heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what are your thoughts on uh, the future of gel ball in in South Australia? Like, what, what can people actually do to help? That there is only one option left, yep. and that is to repeal the regulation. So the Labor Minister down there, the Shadow Minister, yep. said to me mm. that they would repeal the, le- the legislation if they were to get into power. There you go. But okay. I've, I've asked him to come out and say that publicly. Ah, and he, uh, and he won't, not, yeah. won't commit to it. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's a bit of a shame. Yeah, it is a shame. It's a big yeah. shame. Well, I mean, uh, you know, you, you can only hope that um, I, I guess the key decision makers in, in, in South Australia look at what's happening up here in Queensland and 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 see what kind of benefits we're reaping up here as an industry. Well, yeah. look, I might be a bit jaded, but they yeah. and again, sorry for yeah. my language, but they don't give. Yeah, they don't care. It's, it's, it's there, there's no political appetite for it down there whatsoever. Um, the, what they mm. see it as is a bunch of toothless hicks running around with guns playing soldier. That's what yeah. they see it as. They don't see it as a positive hobby. You know, industry, jobs, yep. all the positives that come with it, they just see a bunch of ragtag, you know, hicks. That's all they see. If only they saw the diversity <laughs> in the player base. You know, yeah. it's, it's just, it's so frustrating. Well, we know that. To hear that. You know, it's we know the benefits. We know the benefits for the veteran guys. We know yep. kids, autism. There's the, it just goes on and on and yeah. on. And, and heaps of people have said, I don't need to say it again. But it just goes on and on and on, yeah. and there's industry as well. That, that's yep. that's a by that, that's the least positive byproduct. Yeah, of gel blasters is the industry itself. Yeah, that's it. And you know, I'm, I'm an advocate for the industry, of course, but that is the least positive part. Yeah, you know? uh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely unfortunate. But look, um, yeah, I mean, if you did want to go a bit further into South Australia, the, the laws down there and what happened, yeah. I, I don't know if you guys know what happened. Um, well, do you want to just explain that to everyone out there, just um, you know, in, in layman's terms, I guess? All right, so the, the fact of the matter is, is that they did not have the right to declare it a firearm. Yep. The legislation is written yep. and is poorly written. 
and that's what our barristers discovered. It was poorly written. It did not give them the, the right to do that. Yeah. And basically we discovered that and we were going to court on that issue. They did yeah. not have the right to do it. Now, in that period of time when we submitted that, because you, you have to submit what your argument is to yep. the court. You can't just go and have a roundtable discussion about you know w- what's fair and what's not. There is no fair and what's not. Yep. It's what does the legislation say? Have we got an argument that, that beats the legislation? Whatever, however you want to describe it. And anyway, we went, uh, when we submitted that to the other side, they came back with, oh, well, it meets the definition of a firearm anyway. We said, well, that's not our argument. They said, but it does. So we said, okay, fine. Fine, we'll, we'll go that argument. We'll go both. We'll say, you yeah. don't have the right, plus it's not a firearm because it doesn't compress gas or air, whatever you want to say. Yeah. Anyway, um, we scrambled it all together. They did this sort of last minute on us. Yeah. We scrambled it all together. We got our armourer. He did his report unequivocally, doesn't compress gas. The dictionary definition of compressed gas may potentially 50-50 meet the, uh, for, for gel Open busters. Open to interpretation maybe, sort of thing. Maybe, but the, yep. the engineering definition, absolutely not. does not compress gas. Um, so, And we, we've described that in our report, all that sort yeah. of thing. We submit the report. They said, oh, yeah, nah, we're, we're going to have to adjourn yep. based on this new evidence. Well, oh, okay, well, your argument, you wanted to argue that, we didn't. We came to the table on that and then you wanted to adjourn because our argument is good. Yeah. Anyway, in that period of time, so they adjourned it So and then obviously they scrambled around and said, okay, well, we can't win this one. Yeah. It's pretty obvious. And everybody I spoke to was like, yeah, we're going to win this one. Yeah. yeah. What's their argument? They don't have one. There yeah. is no argument to that. It, it just doesn't exist. No one could think of a counter argument to our argument. Mm. And um, so they, they adjourned it, and then in that period of time, they went and changed the regulations just because they knew they were going to lose. The moving of the goalpost. The moving of the goalpost, yep. Far out. And look, I mean, we, we were always aware that that was a possibility. Yeah. Um, I suppose in my naivety, yeah. I thought, no, nah, they can't do that. Nah, yeah. No way. They couldn't, but they did. So. Shocking. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. But you know what? We're at least uh, reaping the rewards of some tourist dollars because a lot of the South Australian job ballers now visit Queensland to play. Are they? Yeah. Okay. Um, so they come up here, they leave their job licenses with their mates in Queensland and sure. um, they fly up regularly and, and, and participate up here. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. Well, I, I know one team that came up. Yeah. Um, yeah, they came to our store and paid a yeah. visit. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. I did see that video yeah. pop up. That was good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think it was like a combined uh, South Australian team. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. cool. Awesome. All right, well... Look, I hear that Tack Edge isn't your only gig, oh, yeah. right? So um, I remember, so so before we actually started this <laughs> podcast, um, I actually <laughs> read that question out to Pete and he's sort of gone, ah, oh, you know, so uh, this should be interesting. But, are there, you know, I've got rumours that uh, Peter is a financial planner yeah, and yeah. also involved in the boxing industry. Oh, the boxing thing, yeah. yeah. No, the, the, the financial planning, that, that's been my career for yep. the past 15 years before, yeah. before Tack Edge. Um, uh, the the boxing thing. I've I've just got a little interest in in a boxing gym, and we yep. did have two for one period of time. We've got rid of one. COVID didn't do it any any favors. Yep. Um, but mainly like um boxing gloves, fight gear, stuff like that. Oh, cool. That. Yeah. What, what's the brand? Uh, Gym Gear Australia is the cool. actual okay. brand. Yeah. yeah so awesome. that that it's it's only very very surface. Like yep. we haven't really done too much work on yeah. it. It's just something we're. There you go. So it's something I find really interesting with this industry, you know. I mean, um, you know, I do a little bit of wholesale, you know, through Ausgel, but yep. the business owners that I meet, especially for the larger stores, I've noticed they've got their they've got their their hands in a lot of different pots, you know, like they they're doing a lot of different um well, business. You've you've you know? got to be pretty entrepreneurial to yeah. enter into a gel blaster business. Yeah. If you think about it that way. Cuz it, it it it's it's fickle yeah. at, at best, you know, and any time the police could Move yeah. in and do all that sort of thing. So y- you do have to be fairly entrepreneurial. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, now tell us something quirky about Peter I hate Clark this question, mate. I hate it. <laughs> that not many people know about. Could be a hobby, habit, or just anything. Really. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Like, um, I, I box. You box? You yeah, oh, you, you're yeah, a boxer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn. Well, it's only okay, a recent thing that I've started doing, but yeah. yeah. Every, uh, are you like fighter. actually? Are, are you competing, or is it more of a oh, training mate, thing at the I'm moment? Too, I'm too old to yeah? compete. Yeah, I'm too oh, old okay. to compete properly. Look, yeah. I may have a fight one day. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it. 
Is that a challenge you're putting out there? To, oh, no, I'm just you know. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're not fighting me, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a lover. I tell you that much. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a lot of people are pretty. Um, yeah. And look, I was very timid of it a few yeah. years ago. And you get in the ring and you go, you know, yeah, and it's it's very scary. Yeah, but once you start doing it, it's just it's heaps of fun. Yeah, it's heaps of fun. You get punched in the face, but. Fun. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fun to get punched in the face. Of course. Actually, Chris yeah. Sinclair, <laughs> yeah, I know he'll be watching it. Yeah, um, he jumped in the ring with me, and he's he's got a really long, straight, quick yeah. jab, and um, he was getting me like, and I was getting quite annoyed oh, by really, it. and um, like I've thrown over overhead yeah. right, and just it's, his eyes just spinning around his head, <laughs> no. uh, like it was a bit too much. I shouldn't have thrown yeah. it. Like we were only just playing around and. Yeah, it went Jeez. too far with him. But so was it like a bit of uh, like an Evander Holyfield versus like a Costa Zoo type scenario or not it's, quite that dramatic? Or It's one fat old guy <laughs> and one old guy who's a bit fit. Ah, oh, nice. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Pretty much. Far out. All right. Well, look, speaking of the 1v1s, yep. who would win in a 1v1 gel blaster um, uh, shoot off between you and Joe? Oh, Joe kick my ass. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, ah. 100%. A man of humility. But in the boxing ring, <laughs> I'd slay him. <laughs> there you go. I love it. Excellent. Yeah. No, you, and you the ego's <laughs> back up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. <laughs> you have to build yourself up. Yeah. If you don't, who will? No, no, Joe's, yeah. Joe's pretty good. Oh, that's yeah. cool. We um, did have a 1v1. Yep. At one point, he cleaned me up. And yeah. I haven't been in since, actually, to be honest. But no. <laughs> no I, don't, I don't really get too much time yep. to play. I'm more of a look and collect yeah, when it comes to gel blasters. Yeah. I, I think it, it it gets like that. E- even myself, you know, I used to play a lot. Yeah, you yeah. know, right back at the start, but now just just through running the business, you know, yeah, there's yeah. just no time. It's no time. Know, so that's, that's, that's the main that's a big one. Yeah. yeah, but um, no, that's cool. All right, awesome. Well, um, look, Pete, it's been an absolute pleasure having yeah, cool. you here on the podcast. Uh, very informative as well. No worries. Um, again, appreciate you coming all the way up here. But no please problem. run us through how the viewers can learn more about you and Tactical Edge Hobbies. Oh, we're all over Facebook. We're all over yep. Instagram. Um, oh, our YouTube channel has just yep. come back. Oh, cool. Uh, that got zucked. Oh, no, not zucked. Um, what's the other one? Uh, Google took it down. Yeah. Um, I think we actually got hacked, to be honest. And, oh. Um, there was some... Uh, is that what happened? Twice. twice. Yeah, we got hacked wow. twice. Um, so people were getting in there and mucking around and then Google, yep. um, I don't know, yep. shut the channel down. Then we've been trying to get it back ever since. I think we got it back yesterday. And it's back. Yeah. So, and so we're, Tack Edge is back on YouTube. Yes, we're back cool. on YouTube. Um, TikTok's obviously a big one that we've been yep. working on lately. But I don't think many Australians watch that, so it might even no. be a waste of time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just try to do everything. TikTok is random as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, we, we try to get in everything we can, yep. just sort of get the name out there as best That's cool. we can. And, you know, some people don't like how we advertise and, you know. Uh, I've, I've been everyone knows you yeah you know that's, that's exactly. it's worked yeah. so yeah cool. all right cool so tactical edge hobbies you got your website you're on facebook yep. all the social medias yep. it's just as tactical edge is it tactical edge.com.au cool. um right. yeah cool and we've got obviously gel soft australia as well oh awesome yeah, the yeah, field yeah. that's yeah. the field and we've got the tambo events once a month um yeah. we can potentially get in a tank have you have and you been out i haven't yeah. but just just before we finish up yep that, that is something cool to mention, actually, because you've yep. got GSA, the indoor field that's yep. attached to your store. Yep. Then you've also got a place with tanks. That's correct. Bloody yep. tanks. Yep. You know, what so, the hell? And it's all under the GSA umbrella and yep. same website. You go book your ticket, yeah. all, all that sort of thing. So sort we've of organised it that way. Awesome. Um, yeah. Heaps of Excellent. Fun. All heaps right, heaps cool. All right, and guys, as always, I'm Dan from Ausgel. You can find Ausgel at www.ausgel.com.au. We're across all the socials as Ausgel and on Instagram at Ausgel Ammo. Thanks for watching. See you later. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into our podcast. It means a lot to us. If you enjoyed today's podcast, leave a comment or review below and hit the follow or subscribe button. If you have any questions or want to be part of a future episode or even want to know more about Ausgel, head to ausgel.com.au to get in touch.